Here we are with Valerie Uvarov. We are Project Camelot, and we are very pleased to be here in St. Petersburg, Russia. And how do you say that in Russian? Sankt? Sankt Petersburg. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a beautiful city. Lovely. And you are a very interesting man. We're, we're very, very pleased to be here and welcomed into your home. Um, you've been a very gracious host, and thank you very much for that. You're more than welcome, my friend. Thank you. Um, so, we want to begin with, with whatever you are comfortable with, whatever you would like to tell us about yourself. To begin with, we would be curious as to your history, how you came to be where you are today. We know that you're working with the government. I is this true at this time? Well, yeah, more, more or less. Okay. Actually, uh, everything was changed in my life on 1989. Mm -hmm. Before, I was a professional musician, I was studying as a mathematician, and also I, I was studying as an artist, or wow. painter. But at that year, um, when I suddenly noticed that the music I play, the whole life I'm living on, is a little bit different to, to something that is going on in reality around me. I have just understood that our civilization, our planet, has a certain or kind of problems. And it was a choice for me whether I play music as I did before or I will try to take my part in a solution of that problem that I saw around mm. me in this life and I made a decision mm. on that, on that uh, 1989 I have visited a UFO conference here oh. in Russia and I met a lot of very interesting people and investigators over there mm. I have a lot of interesting stories mm. and something just changed in me I, everything was turned upside down and I, and I decided I deny music I deny everything in my life mm. and I decided to be fully devoted to investigation of UFOs actual history of our planet and our civilization and trying to take my own part in making this life, our civilization, better than it was before. So, was it, were you prompted to go to this UFO conference because you might have had an encounter uh, with the visitors, if you would call them that, um, prior to that, consciously, or was this unconscious that you, that you went, you were prompted to go to the conference, but you weren't sure why? In my childhood, I, I have encountered someone, hmm. uh, but at that time I didn't realize what took place. Hmm. For me it was like something, well, maybe usual, strange, but usual. Mm -hmm. Then I started to see strange visions, universe, flying, spacecrafts, the other thing, things, I was, you know, crazy about any films, any books about, you know, extraterrestrials and, you know, fantasies. Mm. Probably it was always inside of me. I see. But on that year, 1989, it was like a deformation mm -hmm. and transformation. Mm -hmm. I have suddenly understood, clearly understood that this new way is the real way for me. Mm. I can... How old were you then, do you know? Well, it approximately. was... Approximately? Yeah. It was 36 years. Ah, really? Just 36 years, mm -hmm. and everything was changed. And I'm happy about it, I tell you. But mm. really, now, I'm a very lucky man. I do what I love to do. Mm. And I have, I have made some very important discoveries, and I hope, and I am always sure we will 
talk about it today, yes. and I will share some very interesting ideas. And you've written some books as well, is yeah, this Yeah, sure. I have written some books, some articles. Uh -huh. Also, I, I do publish Nexus magazine here mm. in the Russian language. Okay. I'm a main editor. Wonderful. And originally we saw you as associated being interviewed as part of Secret Space. This was Chris Everard's uh, mm. video on the space program. And you also have knowledge about this. Is this true? Yeah. Okay. That's true. Okay. And you have some kind of back th background in mathematics? Can you yeah, tell us yeah. what that is? Um, it's a St. Petersburg Polytechnical Institute uh -huh. where I have studied it. I see. And is this um, a formal degree that you have or is this some years of study? No, it, it, it just happened that it was some years of study. Mm -hmm. some of it. And then when this year came, and I have denied everything, and I just was concentrated, completely focused on investigation. Mm -hmm. So I left everything and started to do what I started to do. But at the same time, being a musician, professional musician, a painter, and well, on one hand, a musician, mm -hmm. it's much easier for me to understand what's going on. I can see one event, or let's say, object from three different point of views as a musician, as a musician. Well, it's much easier. So you have the artistic side, you have the scientific yeah. side. Yeah. This is very interesting. Um, and then you have, uh, what would you say? I mean, the music, music and art and, and mathematics. This is uh, a lot of similarities, right? On one hand, yes. Uh -huh. On one hand, mm -hmm. I can look at things very freely. Mm -hmm. I'm not hidden in a small box mm -hmm. of um, of a science. Do you know? Right. Uh, Mathematician can look at the world just like mathematician. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me not. I'm trying to see the event from the different point of views, and it, and it's understandable for me, mm -hmm. especially now when I need to see something hidden behind, for example, some events in the history of our civilization. I need to open mind mm -hmm. and try to understand what stood behind this event. So I need to have a very broad view and to be a musician and artist and mathematician it's, it's very, very useful. Now your current job or title within the UFO, uh, the government and do you have a title? You know what I'm saying? Well, actually it happened like this. Those people in, uh, in military and government mm -hmm. who were engaged for many years of investigation of yes. these UFOs. Uh -huh. They knew about me. Yes. And uh, they have invited me to be a part of their interests. I see. Uh -huh. it's, actually, it was like this. Mm -hmm. So, and they have invited me, and for example, there is a uh, uh, couple of organizations whose help I use in investigation. I am talking to you freely, openly. I mm -hmm. use their help. Mm -hmm. When I need to get access to hidden data bank or some information which you cannot find in a library. So for this reason, I just part of military organization mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm able to get access to anything. And you have, you've, you've done investigations on the pyramid and pyramid energy as well and perhaps they gave you access to the pyramids or the sphinx? Yeah, 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 yeah? sure, uh -huh. sure. Yes. But on the other hand, I'm interested in the science mm. standing behind pyramid. This is the key moment, science. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely sure that those people whom we know or whom we call the hierophants, ancient Egyptians, actually not Egyptians, Atlantean priests. Mm -hmm. It was post-Atlantean priests. They were scientists of a very, very high level. Mm -hmm. I'm completely sure about that. And I was, and I actually am deeply interested in knowledge which they embodied in pyramids, yes. in the temples, mm -hmm. and anything that they have used. First of all, to develop their abilities 
energetical abilities, which later on helps to open up super sensitivity uh, on one hand, and then on the other hand, clear voice. Most of those abilities which they had, and you know, they were very unusual abilities, they were very, very powerful people. Mm -hmm. We now uh, developed in a quite different way. So that's why it was my deepest interest to see what actually they have reached, they have filtered, they have received. Well, pretty soon investigating, investigating ancient texts, I also came to the conclusion all the knowledge that they had, they have received as a gift from a very, very high extraterrestrial civilization. And when I understood it, I said, now what I need to do is to try to find any even small piece of that knowledge left anywhere on the wall of a temple, in a pyramid, in an ancient text. I need to fill it out, to gather it here on my table, analyze and bring the whole knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you started this quest, I assume, after this experience and this realization you had in 89. So now we are in 2007, right? Yeah. So for this number of years, you've been working quite a long time. And you've written books about pyramids. This, the pyramids, and, a, and you're building a pyramid, I understand. Yeah. Is this correct? No, yeah. Now we're building a big stone pyramid. Okay. According to the, those knowledge which actually I have received investigating the ancient uh, pyramids of different civilization. And what is this knowledge that you, can you tell me of a couple of key things that you are building, a, you are building actually more than one pyramid eventually here in Russia, um, not so far from here, you said? Yeah, it's just a hundred kilometers from St. Petersburg. Uh -huh. We have found a very, very ancient place where people uh, were making uh, like a rituals uh -huh. a few hundred years. Okay. And it, it's an earthquake, you know, like a breaking, mm. with a beam of energy getting out of the ground. So, actually, I have done everything according to the ancient uh, canon, you know, like a, uh, the knowledge, how it should be done. So we found the right place. Mm. Actually, there are very, th very good three places, three very good places there. But now we are trying to set a, we are actually setting a pyramid on one of these places. I see. So it's an energy vortex that yes. you have found. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty strong energy vortex. Uh -huh. It's, it's a key moment. We should do it. But at the same time, I came to a strict conclusion that what we actually know, I mean, our civilization knows about the pyramids and their effects. It's almost nothing to reality oh. in comparison to reality. Okay. This is the reason we have decided to set up a pyramid made according to the knowledge. Not like a you know pyramid uh, shapes or some proportions. 